know what you're thinking. Japan is a paradise, perfect in every single way, and you're just dying to go live there. But you're wrong. Scary bugs. So let's start off with the first one. Cicadas, or cicadas. Cicadas? Cicadas? Potato? Patata. <laughs> Either way, they're pretty darn scary looking. They're also incredibly loud. You probably recognize the sound, even if you haven't been to Japan, you probably know it. Cicadas are known to produce sound up to 120 decibels. So for reference, that's probably louder than most concerts. <laughs> they have lungs on them. <laughs> Giant centipedes, over 20 centimeters long. I don't know about you, but that don't sound nice to me. Definitely doesn't fill me with a warm, cozy feeling inside. <laughs> Mukade. As far as I know, that's what Japanese people call this giant centipede, which is actually a symbol of evil in Japanese mythology. It's that terrifying. And it can grow up to 38 centimeters long, which is 15 inches. And it's poisonous and can bite you. I mean, there's that. <laughs> no worries. Geji Geji. This is a house centipede. This can also bite, but I think it's less common. It has these really long long, creepy looking legs. When I first saw a picture of this, <laughs> mm, how do you live with that in Japan? Do you see these regularly? No one warned me about this. It looks like some prehistoric bug straight out of a horror movie. Cockroaches are also apparently really common in Tokyo, which I didn't actually know. I've seen videos online with them and I've considered myself really, really lucky to live in England and never have seen one ever to this day. I've seen pictures of them, videos of them, but I've never actually seen them in, in real life. So this is another thing that's great about England in comparison to countries like Japan and Australia for example. You're just gonna get a lot more creepy, creepy crawlies. And you might not be comfortable with that. And let's not forget the Huntsman spider. Summer heat. So in Japan, temperature can reach to anywhere from 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 21 to 32 degrees Celsius. So comparing that to England, our UK summer is like 9 to 18 degrees Celsius. So when it hits about 20, 20 degrees Celsius, I would say, like a lot of Brits are like, I don't know, it's a bit too hot and too spicy, isn't it? So if you can't handle that, you can't handle Japan. Also, heat and moisture equals mold. And that's something that we don't really have to deal with in the UK. In England, I barely ever see mold. I think the only time you have to really consider it is in the bathroom where a lot of moisture collects. But in Japan, I think you've got to be way more prepared for mold. And I think that could contribute to the reason why Japanese people are so meticulous and so strict with their cleaning and their cleanliness to prevent mold. So if you're not a clean freak, that is also something to consider. Natural disasters, volcanoes, floods, typhoons, earthquakes, tsunamis. The list goes on and on where natural disasters are concerned. You might not want the risk. I know quite a few people in England actually who are Japanese who came here for that exact reason. In England we don't really deal with that. Incredibly lucky actually. I could probably count on one hand how many earthquakes we've had here and the majority of them I never even knew they were there. I slept right through. So that is something that I consider myself incredibly lucky. I've lived such a sheltered life. Maybe you don't want to take the risk in Japan. They completely demolish homes, destroy memories. They're dangerous, unpredictable. For example, in 2011, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami is considered the worst disaster in Japan's recent history, causing over 15,000 deaths and triggering the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Obviously, since then, Japan has made significant improvements to disaster response, but do you really want to risk it? You better be sure before you move to Japan. So I've mentioned in a recent video that tourists have been banned from certain areas in Japan. In Gion, for example, the geisha district, but there are also instances in Japan where you could be turned away. In everyday situations, say in an izakaya, some places just won't accept tourists and foreigners in. And that's something that might make you a little uncomfortable. And I definitely know some people might take that a little personally. For example, if that happened here, it would definitely make the news, there'd be a social media storm, and the place more than likely would be shut down. It's completely different to the UK. So if you're not okay with that, you might want to reconsider living in Japan. For me, I kind of accept that that's the way it is. Is. like it's their country their rules their business but I know not everyone is of that opinion I've never actually experienced it myself and I know that it's not something that happens super super often communication barrier so from daily interactions to signing papers paying bills visiting like the dentist the doctors something simple like the konbini restaurants izakayas where you need to order something and, and there's no english menu around all of these instances can be quite complicated and complex if you don't speak the language and that's definitely not for everyone you're taking a huge risk 
moving to a country where you're not fluent in the language and you don't really understand the customs and the culture yet especially if you move there on your own if you live alone it, i can imagine it could be quite lonely being on your own in, J in japan or just any country for that matter that's not your own it's a bit out of your comfort zone and i understand that that's not for everyone that choice plus japanese people are super super shy you have to be really brave to tear down the social barrier well <laughs> gently tear down the social barrier. Did I mention Japanese people are shy? I'm shy. If you're shy like me, you're shy, they're shy. Two shies don't make a confident. <laughs> so that is a mountain that you may have to climb and that you should be prepared for. Work culture in Japan. So this is probably the biggest obstacle me and Lucas would face to live in Japan, like finding a job out there. Because we don't speak fluent Japanese and that's a huge, huge barrier. Maybe you don't have the certain skills to find a job in Japan. Even if you do, then there's a the whole work life balance that you have to adjust to because it's very very different to where I live where you couldn't get away with like a nine to five job no problem like you can turn up at nine leave at five and that's okay it's not like that in Japan or at least as far as I'm aware it's very different in Japan Japanese people are very very punctual and they do such long hours in a day it's not uncommon to see them on the train to sleep and that was really startling for me to, to witness because that doesn't really happen in the UK it just shows how how much they work and how much effort they put into their work and their work is their life or so it seems so that might not be for you. Not to mention the effect it has on relationships. Maintaining a marriage must be really difficult when you work such long hours and you never get to see your partner. Or if you're single, it must be difficult to meet people if you're always working. There's such nuance to this. It ripples out onto everything, like work-life balance. It's so important and it's one thing that's very complex about Japan. And it's something that you should be prepared for if you're, if you're willing to work in Japan. It really depends on what job you're gonna go for though. But that's definitely another reason you might not want to live in Japan. That's it. Did I scare you away with my five reasons not to live in Japan? Please take this with a grain of salt. I still love Japan. I still dream of living in Japan. I think there are risks with living in any country, but just ask yourself, do the pros outweigh the cons? Is it worth it to you? And to me, without a shadow of a doubt, I'd still want to live in Japan just to experience it. But that's not to say that Japan isn't flawed and that it wouldn't have its challenges because it definitely would. And I'm well aware of that. Spiders, I hate spiders. Toroku, onegaishimasu. Mite kurete, arigato. Bye bye.